one, two, ready, march! In the Bible I can see promises God gave to me. For my sin God sent his son, on the cross his work was done. Ruler of the world is he, full of love for one like me. The Holy Spirit lives in here, holds his precious child near. All the promises God made, they are yes. In Christ, sound off. Promises. Hello everyone, welcome back to Bible Club. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Now, I'm wondering, because we've heard the cadence so many times now, if you can say it at the beginning of the video with Len and Lucy and their friend. So from now on, see if you can say the cadence at the beginning of the video before I or another teacher even come onto the screen. So, first, we're going to review some of the verses that we've been learning. Our first verse, if you remember all the way back to the first week, it was 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And we talked about how that meant that if you believe in Jesus as your Savior, all these promises are for you. Our second verse came from Psalm 148, verse 5. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for at his command they were created. Do you remember what that verse, what story that went with? It went with the story of creation. When God created the world and he spoke and created the trees and the rivers. And our next verse was from 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins. God forgives. That's a promise. And our next verse from Genesis 4, verse 7. If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? And we talked about how that question, God already knew the answer to that question. If you do what is right, meaning believing in God and believing that he's in control, he's the ruler, then you will be accepted. And we learned from our promise word, God receives. God will receive you if you obey his commands and believe he is the ruler. And from last week, with the story of Noah, from Genesis 8, 22, we learn, As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, Day and night will never cease. And that promise said God keeps. God keeps his promises. So after God sent that flood that destroyed the whole world but saved Noah and his family, God promised to not do that again and that he would keep his followers like Noah, keep them safe. And we learned that the rainbow was the symbol that God gave to Noah to show his promise that he wouldn't send another flood. So that's why we put all the promises on this rainbow. Not because we decided that a rainbow is great to show promises, but because God showed a rainbow when he told Noah that he promised to not send a flood again. So now we're going to go into our sixth lesson, and that will be our fifth promise word. But first, we're going to check in on Len and Lucy and see what they have for us today. Len! Ah! Oh, Lucy, I didn't know you were here. No kidding. What are you doing anyway, Len? 
I'm just pretending I'm in the olden days, and I'm protecting myself from the bad guys with my shield. Your what? My shield. A long time ago, people used shields to protect themselves from swords or arrows in a battle or a fight. Oh, so you were imagining you were fighting someone and using your shield to protect yourself. Yep. With this shield, no one could hurt me. I can put it in front of me or on the side or I can turn around and it protects there. See? I was just winning the battle when you came by. Well then, shields sure are interesting, but soldiers don't use them today, do they? No, Lucy, not many people use them anymore, but the Bible talks about them. God says in the Bible, he is like a shield, so we don't have to be afraid. God will protect us. He says in Genesis 15, verse 1, Do not be afraid. I am your shield. Pretty great, isn't it? Hey, I know. Let's make you one. Then you can join me and we can pretend to use shields together. We can pretend we're in a battle together. Okay. Where can we get another one, Lynn? Well, we have to make one. Come on, let's get started. I've got some cardboard in the garage, and my mom probably has markers we can use. Let's go. What did Len have? Oh yeah, he had a shield. A shield to protect him. And our verse today talks about a shield. Now, our verse, let me turn to it here. Our verse comes from There it is. Genesis 15 verse 1. It says, "Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great." Hmm, I'll say it one more time. "Fear not, Abram, I am your shield." Your reward shall be very great. Now, back in biblical times, people knew that a shield was the way that you protected yourself in battle. The shield, you could defend yourself from someone's sword, or you could put it above you if someone was shooting arrows. A shield was very important. It meant protection. Maybe today you can think about it more of like a, a bulletproof vest. We don't really use shields so much. But in our story today, we're going to be talking about a man named Abram. Now, later in his life, God actually changed his name to Abraham. But in this verse, his name is still Abram. And God's telling him not to fear because he is Abram's shield. Now, if God is your shield, God is protecting on all sides, nothing can get through because God is the most powerful thing in this whole universe. So our promise for today is God protects. And see, it's a little shape of a shield there. God protects. That's a promise. And he promised it to Abram in this verse, saying, I am your shield. I will protect you, and your reward shall be very great. Now, we're going to begin our true story from the Bible today that comes from the book of Genesis. And we're going to be talking a little bit about this man, Abram. Now, hundreds and hundreds of years after Noah was alive, there came a man named Abram. And Abram and his family lived in a city called Ur. Now, the people of Ur were not very good. They didn't believe in God. They worshipped idols that were made of wood and stone. And they also worshipped the moon and the sky instead of the creator of the moon and the sky, God. 
Abram and his family believed in God, and they worshipped him. So one day, Abram called his whole family together and said to them, We are going to move. Everyone stared at him and said, Why? Where to? When? All Abram said is, We are going to move to a country that God will show me. The others were so surprised. Abram didn't even know what country they were going to be going to. But Abram trusted and believed God that God was calling him to move to another country. And he was going to obey God no matter what. So Sarah, that's his wife, that's Abram's wife, and the men that worked for them, their whole family, and his nephews, and, and the nephew's family, they all packed everything up and headed out. Now, Abram must have really trusted God because he had no idea where God was leading, leading them. Abram and his family had to have faith that God would protect him. So as they started out on their journey, they brought everything with them. All their livestock and animals, all the workers and the people. And they started out to a country that they had no idea about. They had no map to show them what road to follow and there were no road signs. How did Abram know which way to go? God showed him the way. It was a long and dangerous trip. Over hills and mountains they climbed. But the whole time, God was with them. God watched over them and guarded them all. God was their shield. At last, one day, they came to a new land. They stopped and looked around. Oh, there were hills covered with green grass, trees, and flowers. There was a beautiful river. The, it was a beautiful place that God had brought them to. Again, God spoke to Abram. He promised, I will give this land to your children and your children's children. But how could God do that? Abram didn't have any children. Abram did not understand how God would do this, but he did believe that God would do it. Abram decided to thank God for all that he had done. So he got some stones together and some sticks, and he made an altar. And then he bowed down and gave thanks to the Lord. Now one night, God told Abram to go outside and look up at the sky, look at all the stars. God said, count them if you can. But of course, Abram could not. You can't count the stars, there's too many. God said, your family will be like that. There will be so many people in your family, you cannot count them. They will be a great nation. God also said, through you, through your family, Abram's family, all families will be blessed. Now, Abram didn't understand that either, but he knew that God was telling the truth. He believed God. Abram didn't know that God was talking about Jesus. He was talking about blessing all families on earth through his son, Jesus, the Savior. Jesus was going to be born of a woman that came from the line of Abram. So Abram was going to have children, they were going to have children, and eventually the child would be the mother of Jesus, and then Jesus. So why did God have Abram move to another country to tell him this? Well, because this country, this beautiful country, 
was the place that God was going to have his son, Jesus, be born. So he needed to move Abram to this place so that eventually, after all the other people are born and live, Jesus is born in this special place. Many years had passed until one day God announced to Abram, next year I shall give Sarah a son. His wife is going to have a son, meaning that Abram is going to have children for the first time. And this whole time, Abram's remembered that God said he would make his family, his descendants, as many as the stars. And Abram believed that, but he didn't understand how it could be because he didn't have children yet. But now God is saying, next year I will give Sarah a son. Abram's heart beat so fast, but Sarah, she laughed. She thought that they were too old to have children. But the next year, just as God had promised, Sarah and Abram had a baby. And the baby's name was Isaac. It means laughter. God himself gave baby Isaac the name Isaac because he knew that he would bring so much joy to Abram and to Sarah. This is a part of Abram's reward. You remember from our verse where it said, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. This is part of Abram's reward. Because he trusted God, he had faith in him, God blessed him with a son. And then through Isaac and through their children and their children, Jesus would eventually be born. And Jesus came to save us from our sins. So that's a blessing for all people. So God's promise to Abram came true. God promised to protect him to protect him as he followed God, not knowing where God would lead him, but Abram followed him anyway. We need to have faith like that. God has promised to protect us, but sometimes you can't see it. You can't hear it. You can't touch it. So you have to have faith, faith that God will protect you and faith is just believing, believing that what God says, he will do. shield too? Yes, absolutely. God can be your shield and protector because by believing in Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can be a part of Abram's family. That family that descended from children to children all the way to Jesus, we can be adopted into that family by believing in Jesus. God says, if you believe in my son, you're a part of my family. And God made Abram a part of his family. He made a covenant with him. That's a big word. But he also made that promise to us. 
if we believe in Jesus. We can be a part of that family too. Now, sometimes in life we, we get afraid. We get scared. I, I'm kind of afraid of spiders. I don't like things like tornadoes or hurricanes, lots of big weather. Those things scare me. But I can believe that God is my protector. God will protect me. God will shield me from anything that could hurt me. Now, sometimes I still get afraid because I don't, I don't see, you know, a real shield. And so sometimes those fears can make me just sort of go inside and get so scared and not know what to do. But that's why God has sent his Holy Spirit to be your live inside friend. If you believe in Jesus, God sends you his spirit to live inside you. And that spirit reminds you, oh yeah, I don't have to be afraid. God is my shield. God will protect me. And that's having faith, believing that that is true. You can believe it, but you can also see that God, he did keep that promise. He kept it to Abram. He led him across many countries to the land where they were meant to be, and he kept them safe. And throughout the Bible, you can see story after story of God protecting people. So you listen to those stories and then you believe with your heart because you believe in Jesus that that promise is for you too. And then when you feel afraid or you feel scared or you don't know what God's doing or what he's asking you to do, you can remember that he's protecting you. He has a shield around you. You don't have to be afraid. Just listen to God and do what he says. And your reward, just like Abram's reward, will be very great. God, thank you for being my shield. Thank you for protecting me. Thank you that the promise that you will protect me is mine when I believe in Jesus Christ as my Savior. God, I pray that I will be able to listen to my live inside friend, the Holy Spirit, when I do feel afraid and trust that you are protecting me and that you are leading me to my very great reward. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus, Lord of promises.